Hello you guys, this is Fun Automotive, and in this video I'm going to tell you exactly how I fixed my O2 sensor problem, and exactly what the problem was, and why actually the lift, why the lift caused this, the subframe drop, because the wiring harness, and you'll see, so let's get to that. Alright you guys, now, in the engine bay, we got the wiring harness, we got, <clears throat> we got the two wiring um, O2 sensor wires coming down off the wiring harness to bank one sensor one and bank one sensor two. Bank one sensor two being passenger side, upstream, bank one sensor one obviously, driver side, upstream. So the wire <clears throat> on my, my cause, the very first thing that happened was I had like three check engine lights and I wasn't, I was thinking, why, why is this happening? Why do I have three check engine lights, you know? I'm like, the check engine light comes on for an O2 sensor, usually from in my, my case, my problem with being lucky, it was just an O2 sensor and that's what I was thinking, okay, bank one sensor one, P0031, okay, upstream driver. So, replaced it and still have all the codes still there still present nothing and nothing changed at all whatsoever so I was doing some research and oh lo and behold I found out that Jeep has an O2 sensor fuse so I changed it and yeah I never knew that Jeeps had that fuse I don't know if all Jeeps do but for sure the Liberty does and I know the Cherokee does I'm not sure about the Wrangler. I know the Grand Cherokee does. So, the WJ and probably even the ZJ. But, I changed it and still, no, no, no fix whatsoever. I forgot to mention that fuse that I did change that I was just talking about mentioning just now. That was blown. That was done for toast. So, I replaced that. It's a fuse, 15 amp fuse. Replaced that. Still. Um, it ran better, it ran a whole lot better, but it still had a hiccup in the system and when you barely push the gas you could feel it choking out, wanting to die. So I'm still sitting here wondering, like, okay, um, what's the cause? You know, what is the cause? I went through all the wiring harness, went through every single sensor where the sensor, the O2 sensor plugs into the harness, went, followed it all the way up on every single one, just couldn't find anything. And it was, it, it just, it made me give up. You know, I was like, I'm done with this Liberty. And that's why I'm selling it right now as this video is present. I'm selling that. I love it. There's nothing wrong with it anymore. It's done. I didn't want to take it to the shop. I don't have the money for them to diagnose that shit because I know I could do it myself. <clears throat> so finally, I found the time and looked over the wiring harness once again. So this is the second try. I went through each and every one of them. I started with bank two, bank one sensor two, and then bank two sensor two, and then bank two sensor one, and then bank one sensor one, and I followed bank because I start I, I ended up doing bank when I ended up doing bank one sensor one. I was thinking to myself, okay, I got the P zero zero thirty one code that would be bank one sensor one. So I was thinking to myself, I should have just started there, but I got to it last. So whenever I followed that one through again the second time. I couldn't see anything. Now when I really dug close to that, where the O2 sensor and the wiring harness plugged together, when I dug closely to it and got really close, because it, it, the people with the Liberties know, that sensor, that wire going to that sensor is very short. You really got to stick your head in there and get to it because it won't come out. It's very, very shallow. And it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass to reach and plug the O2 sensor in, period. So whenever I looked in nice and close to that sensor, there was gunk and thing stuff all over it, and so I just started digging my nail into it, taking all the dirt off, and lo and behold, I found three of those wires worn through and touching. That was from the steering, I, I'm not sure the right way to pronounce it, the steering column, the part that moves, the column that goes to the rack and pinion that turns the wheels. That part, the column, was rubbing up against that harness and it wore right through to where the wires started touching each other and throwing a check engine light. And that's what I'm making this video for today. 
is to tell you all that whoever does this lift, be sure to watch out for this problem because it will happen if you don't pay attention. So what I done is I grabbed two zip ties because I didn't have a long one. I grabbed two of them and just clipped them together as circles and then threw the wiring harness through that so it's hovering right over the column, the steering column where it spins. It's hovering right over that to the O2 sensor into the cat, cat out of the converter. So problem solved, problem fixed, problem good. No more problems with this. All done. Good. Still, it's going to be up for sale. I'm looking to buy a WJ as I was telling everybody. That's my plan. I want a WJ low mileage. Loretto, I don't want the limited. That's what I'm looking for. Loretto, low mileage, clean, four wheel drive, inline six, 4.0. That's what I'm looking for. I love this engine. The 3.7 is a very, very good engine. It's got a lot of torque. It's, it's pretty damn quick. I like it. But the, I remember the being having the straight six, the 4.0 inline six that the WJ has. I used to own a green Grand Cherokee before this, um, and it, it was, it's a sluggy engine. It's not the fastest. This for sure is faster than the 4.0 WJ. That's a fact. It's a it's a lot faster. Even with these 33s, this thing still hauls ass. <laughs> I remember when I was first starting to lift this Liberty, I remember seeing people saying, 33s, that's too big, 32 is the highest you can go because it'll be a sluggish piece of shit. Not true. 33s still have plenty of power. Plenty of power on these 33s. And I was wanting, I was going to go with some 35s after this, but obviously, like I said, I'm selling it. But I know that this thing will still kick ass with some 35s. It's, it's got that torque, three, 373 gearing, if, if that's the right one. I haven't thought about that in a while. Yeah, 373 gearing, I'm pretty sure it's what it is. It's people out there that don't, that don't, that just think it can't happen and you're just going to be sluggish and a slow piece of junk. They don't know what they're talking about. You can do 33s, no problem. Well, oh, that's off topic, but all right. That's the problem, though, with the Liberty that was the problem and I just want you guys to know that's how you you have to pay attention to that part uh, let me let me show you let me turn you around right now all right you have to pay attention to that bank one sense one wiring harness I'll show you which one driver side driver side upstream first sensor that's down here let me see if I can get a view All right, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's the zip, one of the zip ties. I can't see because the sun is so bright, but one of the zip ties are down there, right there. The harness is going through that over the column and to the O2 and, and the, I mean the catalytic converter. So you're just gonna wanna hang that right on over so it is not touching. Let me see if I can get a better view right here. Maybe, maybe not. You're just gonna wanna hang that right on over. Make sure, right now you can't really see because the heat shield's in the way, but it's hovering right over that steering column. Right over that steering column. And under the heat shield, as you can see, it's running back right here. That's the wire to the O2. And that's what you gotta look out for. Now, I haven't had any other problems with any of the other O2 sensor plugs to the wiring harness. I've went through them all, didn't find any, any weird rubbing issues like that at all. That's the only one that comes close to any moving parts. So that's the one you want to look out for. And of course, look out for every wire touching any part of the exhaust. <clears throat> you want to make sure there's none touching on anything. So the people who have done this five inch lift, beware. Make sure that wire is tucked away nice and away from anything that's going to cause it any harm because you're going to have those wires stripped right through and it was a pain in the ass putting that um, putting the wire loom back over it and patching all the wires up and it was a pain in the butt doing all of that because of the position and how far it is so before this even happens to you check on that make sure that's out of the way and clean and clear now, that's pretty much it for this video. <clears throat> I hope you guys like it. 
Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys think I should get a WJ and if, if you'd be interested in even watching the WJ. My plans for a WJ is six inch lift, 35s. That's, that's my goal. Six inch lift, six inch lift on some 35s. And um, the winch just doing it completely all out. <clears throat> So, I don't know if I may go with the long arm kit, it's pretty pricey. I may just straight up do my own thing, just like I did with this. Just do my own lift, don't, I'm not gonna, I don't think, long arm kit is the best you can get, I'm pretty sure, for the articulation and things, but, this Liberty is badass, I really do like it. Kind of having second thoughts about selling it, but, I don't know, we'll see what happens in the future and what God brings to me, so. This is Fun Automotive. I hope you guys like this video. Please like, please subscribe. I never say that, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.